We just swipe over from the right and then we have all of these apps here and it just hides right out of the way and you can barely even notice it on the screen. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on your Samsung Galaxy A13. If you're interested in this phone or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. I also have a full review up on the channel that you should check out. Let's get right into it. This video was made possible because of our friends over at Visible. Visible by Verizon is a simpler way to do wireless for $30 a month. Yes, that includes taxes and fees. You can get unlimited talk, text, and data nationwide in the US on Verizon's 5G and 4G LTE network. Let's not forget about our unlimited hotspot at five megabits per second, built-in spam protection, and unlimited talk and text to our friends in Canada and Mexico. For $45 a month, you can choose the the Visible Plus plan that features everything we just mentioned and more. Wow. You get 5G ultra wideband premium network experience at 50 gigabytes and additional international benefits and a $10 a month savings on Verizon home internet. See our affiliate link in the video description for additional information. On your A13, to capture a screenshot, you'll have to press the volume down button and your side button or power button at the exact same time. And once you do, you'll notice the screen gives you that little white flash and box. It just captured and saved the image to the phone for you. If you're wondering about palm swipe, unfortunately, that is not a feature available on this phone. Next, let's talk about some navigational tips and tricks. The first one is choosing how you want your phone to be laid out. So let's go up to the top. Let's select the settings gear icon and we're going to search for navigation. And you'll notice up at the top display navigation bar, that's what we want to select. And we'll choose that setting here. And we have two options, buttons or swipe gestures. I prefer the buttons, but you have the gesture option as well. With buttons selected, you may notice we can change the button order. With swipe gestures, we have a couple of options as well. We have the more options that's gonna illuminate. So we'll select that. And that takes us to swipe from the bottom or swipe from sides and bottom, and you can adjust the sensitivity. You'll also notice we have our gesture hint and show button to hide keyboard. We can toggle those on or off. So choose the route you wanna go. With these larger displays, what's nice is Samsung has a built-in one-handed mode. So search again from the settings. I just will start typing out one hand, and it brings up advanced features, one-handed mode. We're gonna choose that toggle it on and then we have a setting right here do you want it to activate with a gesture it involves swiping or do you want to double tap the home button so we'll do the home button right there we have it on so let's go home and watch what happens so we're on our home screen we're going to double tap boom shrunken down screen there's as small as it'll go for us now we just can move it around on our phone top or bottom left or right you get the idea there. Try to bring it back down. I like to use it in that corner. And we have a full working phone, as you would expect right here. It's just everything's a little bit smaller, but a lot easier for your one-handed operation right there. Now what's funny is, I thought I had clicked the calendar there, or excuse me, I thought I clicked the calculator. There we go. But a lot easier to use with that large screen, especially if you have a smaller hand or fingers. Also, to exit out of it, just hit anywhere else on the screen and it goes back to full screen. There's also some cool motion and gestures that you can turn on or off. So let's go back to our settings. We're gonna start searching for them. So I'm gonna select motion and that's under advanced features, motion and gestures. We're gonna select it and we can double tap to turn on screen, double tap to turn off screen, turn over to mute if you wanted, and we have our finger sensor gestures that we can adjust right there too. If you wanna open a panel that way, it's nice that we can do that with the fingerprint button, and we kinda of get an extra hidden button by having that enabled. If you wanna be able to pull down the panel from the top to check your notifications quickly from the side of your phone. Speaking of that side button, power button, whatever you wanna call it, let's go look at the option we have there. We can configure that a little bit more too. So I'm just gonna search side key. That's under advanced features. We'll select it 
and we can choose if we want to enable a double press and what happens if we do. So press it twice, right now it's gonna launch our camera or maybe there's a frequently used app, TikTok, Instagram, I don't know, whatever you're using a bunch that you wanna pop up when you double tap it, you can just pick and choose the app right there and it will open it up for you. Also, another nice way to get there is to hold the button down and you'll see at the bottom, we have our side key settings. So we can easily tweak that anytime. Next up is a feature you might not even notice is on. It could be enabled on your phone right now. Mine is, it's this edge panel on the side. We just swipe over from the right and we have all of these apps here and we can choose to edit them as we see fit. So let me show you how to get to that. Settings, display, and down here it's edge panels. Ours is on, we have it set to apps, but there's people, smart select, tasks, weather tools, reminder, your clipboard. You can also adjust it, left or right side of the screen, choose your style, transparency, vibration if you want. I like to add the vibration feedback. But that's our edge panel right there. It's very sneaky, but gives us some extra screen real estate with some one finger navigation right there. So depending on the size of your hand or how you hold the phone, you might really like having that. And it just hides right out of the way and you can barely even notice it on the screen. It's so slim right there. Next up is our self-destruct mode. That's what I like to call it. This is basically a way to enhance the security of your device. So watch what happens. We're gonna search for lock and we'll go to our smart lock option. It's actually under secure lock settings where we need to enter our pin. And then you'll notice we have this auto factory reset that we can toggle on or off. This is our self-destruct mode. So if there's 15 incorrect attempts to sign in and unlock your phone, everything will be reset to factory default settings. So if you maybe live in a high crime area or you're forgetful or you're nervous about it getting stolen, lost, what happens if somebody's trying to like break in and, and you know get access to your phone? If they sign in 15 times incorrectly, it will conduct what I'm calling the self-destruct and factory reset everything for you. Kind of in line with that is the ability to hide apps on your phone. So same thing, pull down from the top, hit the settings gear icon. We're just gonna start searching hide and you'll notice we have lots of options, but it's under our home screen at the very bottom, hide apps. We're gonna choose it. And then you can pick and choose which apps you want to hide. So in this case, let's get rid of our calculator and our camera. We're gonna select done. Now we're gonna go home. There's no camera anymore. That was right here at the bottom, if you remember. And we'll look for our calculator. Our calculator is no more as well. We have successfully hidden our apps. They're not deleted or uninstalled. You can go back in there anytime and turn them back on. Don't believe me? Well, we're back in here right now. Select hide apps, calculator camera. We have now unhidden them. And you'll see right here, they should pop up. There they are. There's our camera and our calculator. Just rearrange them wherever you want on your phone. Next up, we have a couple of battery tips and tricks to go over. So select the settings gear icon. You can search battery. It is one of the options here, battery and device care. So I'm just gonna choose it right off the menu. And the first option is what we want, battery right there. You'll notice we have our power saving setting. Let's turn that on. And now we can extend the life of our battery. You'll also notice we have limit CPU speed by 70%, decrease brightness, limit apps and home screen. You can tweak some of those settings if you want. Just turn them on or off. Also though, further down, you might miss this. There's this more battery setting section where we have our adaptive battery section where we can toggle that on to extend battery life based on your own phone usage. And you can also show battery percentage. Some Samsung phones have the ability to turn fast charging on and off and to cap your charge at 85% for battery health. That is not an option with our A13. Next up, I wanna show you some cool shade options that we have here. So you may notice when I pull it down, we have our device control and media output buttons there. You can remove those if you don't want them or you can keep them visible. Also, you may notice if we pull that down a rung further, we now have our brightness slider here. 
we can actually put that on a notification screen if we want. So at this screen in the top right hand corner, select those three dots. And there's a quick panel layout option here where we have, you guessed it, our brightness control slider. So we can show when quick panels expanded or show always. So if you choose show always, I'll show you how that looks, but that'll be in our notifications now. And then if we want to hide those other buttons, we can select done or same thing, configure it a different direction. But ta-da, now we have our brightness slider everywhere. We don't have those other buttons or we could do a combination of the buttons and the slider here. It's really up to you, but I like to have the brightness slider readily available. Next, let's talk about our camera cutout. We can actually configure our apps on an app by app basis to choose how you want them to display. So we'll go to our settings again. We're just gonna choose the display option. You could search full screen, cut out things like that. So it's under the full screen apps section where we have our aspect ratio to force an app to do full screen if we want, even if it's not optimized. But we have this camera cutout section. So do you want it to show the camera cutout a little notch or would you rather have it be a black bar on the screen to hide it? Up to you, just pick and choose the app and how you want it to display, default, hide, or show. Pick and choose maybe depending on your favorite mobile game, things like that. It comes in handy to configure the display exactly how you want it. 